Carpenters Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Glory be to God. Are we a church that knows that all power belongs to Him? Are we a church that knows that the Word of God is all we need? Can we lift our hands to Jesus? Give him the praise that is due to his name. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you for who you are to us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Can you give someone a high five? How about saying, yay, when you give them a high five? Or someone says, what are you saying yay for? We are saying yay because we are alive. Say yay. yay. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We're continuing our message series, Living Life Under Open Heavens, Part 4. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank God I lost my notes last time I wanted to preach this because I've got them back from heaven. And I've gotten them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and so it was a blessing actually losing my notes. Amen. But I don't pray that on anybody. But this one is here, backed up in 100 places, cannot get lost. Amen. So, what are open heavens? What did we say open heavens are characteristic of? We said it's characteristic of the supernatural life. The life that we're talking about under open heavens is the life. That Jesus has introduced us to. We began to look at three supernatural experiences using Ezekiel 1, 1 to 3. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Shabbat, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, which was in the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Cheba, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. So we began to look at visions of God. We said Ezekiel saw visions of God. And we found out that we have like five or six questions to answer, so we really know about these visions of God that God is talking to us about. First question we answered was, how do you see? The next question was, with what do you see? The third question was, what? Who remembers? What was the third question? When do you see? And we found examples of unconventional situations where people saw visions of God. Now, we're still looking at when do you see? And hopefully, we'll close that out today. When do you see? That's what we're continuing from. When do you see these visions of God? So this is another dimension to the question, when do you see? At what time do you see? The heavens are open all the time over our lives, over us here in TCC. There is really no prefixed good time to see, but we can prepare ourselves and all of that, but there are times that we can certainly receive these visions of God. So how are we going to explain this further? We're going to look at two concepts of time. And I need your attention throughout this so God can really get to you the things he wants to get to you. A close look at two concepts of time. And the two concepts of time we're going to look at is the concept of Kronos time and the concept of Kairos time. C-H-R-O-N-O-S, Kronos, and K-A-I-R-O-S, Kairos. C-H-R-O-N-O-S, Kronos, and K-A-I-R-O-S, Kairos. So do we see visions of God? In Kairos time or in Kronos time? That's the question we're aiming to answer 
with what we're looking at today. Do we see visions of God in Kairos time or in Kronos time? When do we see visions of God? Let's do some definitions and some comparison so we really get a picture of what Kronos time is and what Kairos time is. Kronos from the vines denotes a space of time. Whether it's short or it's long, it's a space of time. You can then begin to think of English words that begin with chron, like chronological. Chronological, that's something that refers to time. A space of time, whether short or long. A duration of a period. So that's time like we all know it. Time like your clock measures. Time like your calendar measures. Time like your birthday reminds you of every year. Chronological time. That's Kronos. Okay? Kairos, on the other hand, refers to a fixed or definite period. A fixed or definite period. A season. Sometimes an opportunity. A fixed or definite period, a season, an opportunity. Kairos is marked by certain features. Kronos is just marked by the movement or the duration of time, whether it's short or it's long, one month, one week, one year, one decade. But Kairos is an opportunity, a season that is marked by certain features. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And the season we're in now is the open heaven season. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Something else about Kronos and Kairos, and let me say this from another source. A sequence of moments is expressed as Kronos, emphasizing the duration of the time. A sequence of moments. One second, two seconds, three seconds, one minute, two minutes, three minutes. A sequence of moments is expressed as chronos, emphasizing the duration of the time. But an appointed time, an appointed time is expressed as kairos, with no regard for the length of that time. Is somebody getting this? An appointed time is expressed as kairos, with no regard... For the length of the time, therefore, Kronos is more linear. Am I saying it too fast? I'm sorry. Forgive me. Where was I? A sequence of moments, is that fine? A sequence of moments is expressed as Kronos. Emphasizing the duration of the time. A sequence of moments is expressed as chronos, emphasizing the duration of the time. An appointed time is expressed as kairos. An appointed time is expressed as kairos. With no regard for the length of the time. With no regard for the length of the time. Therefore, Kronos was more linear or is more linear and quantitative. I need you to get this. Kronos is more linear and quantitative. And Kairos is non-linear and qualitative. Kronos is more linear or sequential and quantitative. Quantity of time, five years, 10 years. It's been 15 years, 25 years. That's Kronos time. But Kairos time is non-linear and it's qualitative. What is the quality of the features that marked this Kairos time. 
What is the quality of the features that marked this opportune season? What is the quality of the features that marked these opportunities God has brought my way? Hello? That's Kronos time versus Kairos time. The question is, do we see visions of God in Kronos time? Or do we see visions of God operating in Kairos time? I would even like to call them time zones. Do we see visions of God in the Kronos time zone? Or do we see visions of God in the Kairos time zone? Imagine if you have somebody, a family member who's on a different time zone. I have a daughter who's nine hours behind us. So imagine if I call and I say to her in a text, I'll be talking to you at 6 a.m. I have to say which 6 a.m. Is that right? Because my 6 a.m. is probably her 9 p.m. the previous day. But I may have meant her 6 a.m. So she's up at 9 p.m. wondering why mom hasn't called. Meanwhile, when I said 6 a.m., I meant your 6 a.m., which is my 3 p.m. So you've got to know which time zone you're operating in. God could be sending you visions of God of himself in one time zone and you're looking at another time zone and wondering where the vision is. Hello? God could be speaking to you in one time zone, but you're in another time zone wondering what is going on. Time is ticking. Meanwhile, he's giving you the answer in the Kairos time zone. I've gone ahead of myself. But you're looking in the Kronos time zone and wondering what is going on. So you could be on the wrong time zone and God is giving visions and you're not seeing. An example is the toilet I just talked about. In the Kronos time zone, it makes no sense trying to build that kind of thing in one month. With all we had to do, with the money we had to believe God for, to put it in the quality we wanted it. But I said to them that day, I believe I received a vision of God. I believe this is the opportune moment to change our toilets. And if you just tell me you can work with me and believe with me on this, I believe the money will come and I believe it will be finished in one month. Will it be finished? It's hard to say no. And they said, yes, it will. And they finished it. But if you looked at the time and focused on that, that would not have been done. Glory be to God. So what time zone are you listening? And what time zone are you operating in? And let me show you something else. When we talk about these time zones, note that I'm not saying the Kronos time zone is not approved by God. God set us on this earth. Jesus plugged himself out of eternal time and plugged into time. That's why we can say Jesus was on this earth for 33 and a half years. We can say Jesus ran his ministry for three and a half years. So he's not against the Kronos time zone. You just need to know when you need to focus on that time zone and when you need to take your eyes off it. Is somebody understanding me? Let me show you a portion of scripture. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Acts 1 6. Therefore when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time, which one do you think that is? Kronos or Kairos? Kronos. Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? You know, Jesus was about to leave them. That was a very selfish question. They wanted the Roman rule to go away. They wanted to be comfortable politically. Jesus, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And what did Jesus say to them? It is not, not those words. It is not for you to know. Times, Kronos, and seasons, Kairos, which the Father has put in his own authority. So both time zones are approved by God. Jesus said, it's not, what are you asking me this question for? It's not for you to know Kronos time zones or Kairos time zones that God has placed in his own authority. Now, are you concerned that Jesus said it is not for you to know? Should you be concerned about that? I'm telling you that you need to know the two time zones. Now, I'm telling you that Jesus said it is not for you to know. Does that concern anybody? I want, to, I want to see your hand up if it concerns you. Yeah, it concerned me too. When I read it, I was looking for Kronos and Kairos to show that it was in the Father's authority. But then I saw that statement. I said, how can you say it's not for me to know? I'm about to teach the people that they need to discern when it's Kairos and when it's Kronos. Now you're telling me that it's not for me to know. 
There's a problem with that statement, Lord. So I began to explore that expression. And I found out that it's not for you to know. It's a poor translation. What it actually says is this. It is not yours to know. Or it is not for you to know by yourself. Does that make a difference? I can't hear you. Does that make a difference? If he says to you, it is not for you to know. The door is shut. You can never know. How are you supposed to operate in a time zone where God is speaking to you if he says it is not for you to know? It actually means it is not yours to know. It is not for you to know by yourself. Ooh, that excited. That got me screaming. Because I found out he wants me to know, but he's just telling me I can't know by myself. You get me? Now look at the Kenneth West translation, which breaks it down. He said to them, it is not yours. He translated it right. It is not yours to know. The chronological events, chronos, in the passing of time. Listen to me, church. Just follow me. It is not yours to know. The chronological events in the passing of time. Nor... Listen to Kairos. The strategic epochal periods of time which the father placed within the sphere of his own private authority. It's not yours to know how something moves with time. It's also not yours to know the strategic periods of time. If it's not mine to know, Lord, then whose is it to know? If it's not mine to know by myself, then who can help me know? Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Don't take Acts 1.8 out of context. But shows it's linking to the previous verse. It's not yours to know by yourself. It's not yours to know on your own. But there is somebody who is coming who with his guidance and his leadership, you will always know what it is you need to know in the time zone you are meant to operate in. That is how you can be witnesses to me. You cannot be witnesses for God if you miss the opportunities and the seasons that he brings your way. Somebody say hallelujah. Did you get that? You can't. How can you express the power of God? If the open heaven season comes and passes you by, you cannot be a witness for God. You cannot be a proof producer. You cannot show people the power of God. But Jesus says, you can't know it by yourself, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And when you walk with the Holy Spirit, and you let the Holy Spirit lead you, and like we learned during Discovering Treasures, when you understand that heavens are open, and the Spirit of God descending like a dove, it's all of God's goodness and treasure, wisdom, and everything you need sent down on you. Then you will know. Look at your neighbor and say, you will know. You can't know by yourself. Tell them you can't know by yourself. But with the Holy Spirit, you will not miss your Kairos season. You will not miss your Kairos moment. And you will know. And you will see the visions of God. And you will know. The things that God wants to show you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You will know the Kairos time. You will also know the Kronos time. I'm showing you that both are approved by God. And both are set in his authority. Why? You can't tell me it was a Kairos moment for you to marry off your daughter at 11. So the move of God respects Kronos as well. Because chronologically, some things are just not right. You can't marry off a girl at eight before puberty and say it was a Kairos moment. It was an opportunity that came your way. No. No. It's not for you to know either. But with the Holy Spirit, you will know that some things come before the other. You will know puberty comes before marriage. Hello? You will know purpose comes before starting a church. There's set a call comes before starting a church. There are certain things you will know by the help 
of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember what, what we were told in Discovering Treasures. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. That was our text for the program. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in, his, in, in what? His season. And to bless all the work of thine hand. And you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Who knows what the Septuagint is? What's the Septuagint, Bible scholars? Somebody raise their hand and tell me. I will just put down my mic and go and sit down. Who knows? What? We've said it a hundred times. Yes. Yes. The Old, the Old Testament. I can't hear you. The Old Testament. What about the Old Testament? You're halfway there. See? What's the Septuagint, guys? You're on live stream. -o. The Greek translation of what? Clap for yourselves. Eh? The Greek translation of the Old Testament. Why is it Greek? What was the Old Testament originally written in? Hebrew. And the New Testament in what? Greek. So sometimes you are reading the Old Testament. You want to see if the word used is the same word used in the New. That's why the Septuagint was made available. So if you use the Septuagint, and this is Deuteronomy. So it's not in Greek, right? Hello? But Kairos and Kronos, are they Greek or Hebrew? Greek, New Testament. So we're talking about a word in the Old Testament. We want to find out what is God talking about here. When he says that he will open unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain to thy land in his season. Which one do you think season is in the Septuagint? Kronos or Kairos? Kairos. Kairos. We're talking about open heavens, God's season, the rain coming, his good treasure. It comes in the Cairo season. It comes in the due season. It comes in an opportune moment like now. It comes in a moment marked by certain features and certain characteristics that God wants to use to take it to another level. This is the season. Glory be to God. And this is his season. This is his Kairos moment. Amen. So next question. Is it possible for us to miss this season and be distracted from it? We're zeroing in. Who is in their Kairos season? Ay, ay, ay. Who is in their Kairos season? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not sure of it. Who is in their Kairos season? Who is experiencing a Kairos moment? Who is? I am, as a person, I am the, for the church. We're not going to miss this season. But I'm going to show you something that makes a lot of us miss this Kairos season. You're trusting God for something in your life. A business, a husband, a baby. Yeah, 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 this is my Kairos season. You know, you could shout that and say that and this season will pass you by and that thing will not come. Why? Because you're in the wrong time zone. We're going to look at the concept of delay. That's the next thing we're going to look at now. The concept of delay is something that makes believers kairos after kairos, opportunity after opportunity, miss their miracle because they are focusing on the concept of delay. In which time zone do you find the concept of delay? I can't hear you. Kronos. So if it's your due season, your kairos season, but you're focusing on how long, delay, how much time has passed. I've done this before, heard this before, nothing happened, it's going to happen again. You'll miss it. And that's what happens to a lot of believers. Let's look at Matthew 24. We'll see some interesting things from this story. Matthew 24. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Okay, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in the due season, Kairos? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so 
doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is what? Is what? Write down chronizo. That's the word for delay. Can you see that? Delay is directly linked to chronos. Chronizo. C-H-R-O-N-I-Z-O. And chronizo means to take time. To linger. To delay. To tarry. To take time. To linger. To delay. To tarry. My master is delaying his coming. And he begins to beat his fellow servants. And to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come. He will come. On a day. Note this. When he is not looking for him. And at an hour that he is not aware of. And will cut him in two. And appoint him his portion. With the hypocrites. There shall be weeping. And gnashing. Of teeth. This story shows the limiting power of operating in the Kronos time zone. What did that servant say? My master is delaying. My master is taking time. When you judge the blessing on your life in the Kronos time zone, you will miss the manifestation of the blessing. How many of us have ever felt that this thing is delaying? Can you be honest with me, please? How many of us sometimes feel this thing is taking time? It's lingering. Am I not in faith? Have I not been speaking the word? I've been sowing seed. The minute you begin to register the concept of delay, why is this roof not up? Have we not been sowing seed? When is the harvest coming, Lord? The minute you begin to register the concept of delay, you are taking yourself out of the Kairos time zone. And it is in the Kairos time zone that God gives you visions. It is in the Kairos time zone that the opportunity that will change your life in a minute comes. It does not come in the Kronos time zone. So you could be smack in his season. The heavens are open. The rain is falling. The goodness of God and all of his treasure has come out. But you're thinking, so when, Lord? Discovering treasures is over a week now. When? You are taking time. That is how you can step out of what God has placed right in front of you. And does that happen to us sometimes? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So let's look at three things we can learn from this story. We're going to compare the possible two servants we see in this story. See, there's a servant. He does this. Or what if he does this? So there's a possibility of two servants talked about in this story. Let's compare three things about them. Let's compare their expectations in the Kairos zone and in the Kronos zone. This will help you know what zone you're in. In the Kairos zone, what did we find about that servant who was in the Kairos zone? When you are operating in the Kairos time zone, you will maintain your expectations in faith. They won't be distracted. Five years later, you are declaring the same thing. Ten years later, you are declaring the same thing. Fifteen years later, you are expecting him. He said, when he comes, church, it will come. If you have received it in the spiritual realm, he, it, they, that thing will come. When you are operating in the Kairos time zone, when you kill the concept of delay, your expectation will not be shaken. It won't. It won't be moved. People will be counting the chronos for you. They'll be pulling you back. 10 years married. 42 years old. Five years in ministry, you still have five people. 
They'll be pulling you back. You say no. He said he's coming. <laughs> so I know he's coming. He doesn't lie. He has always been a good and faithful master to me. If he said he's coming, he's coming. And I know he's coming. And when he comes, when, the Bible said when. Not if, when he comes. Church, look at someone and tell them when. Not if. He's surely coming. It's surely here. It's already done. It's settled forever. Stay in the Cairo zone. Kill the concept of delay. Chronizo will not help you. How much time? How much time? How much time? Well, look at the guy who was in that zone. Guess what happened? When you are in the Kronos time zone, your expectations begin to get degraded. You say, how do you know, pastor? How do I know? Read it. The Bible said that the master came at a time when he was not expecting him. How can the very thing that is frustrating you be the very thing you no longer have expectation of? You think you are in faith, but you are not anymore. You're just carrying out the routine. You don't really believe that husband is coming anymore. Or you have degraded your standards. Anything we get two leg, we give me the leg, bump it, make it just come. Anyhow, that baby wants to come. Some women now lie to their husbands and go and do all this magic and come back pregnant. Doctors can tell you the stories, horrible stories. And they come and they testify. What happened? They operated in Chronizo. How long, how long, how long? And when how long begins to be your mantra, anxiety will set in. Expectations are degraded. If the guy, if the guy was saying he's taking time, don't you think his expectation should have been very high? He's taking time now. Where is he? The Bible says he was doing what he was doing, and he did not now even know. He didn't know. He didn't know. Second comparison. We're comparing, we've compared their expectations. <laughs> Let us compare their behavior. Let us compare their behavior. The one who operated in the Kairos time zone, what was his behavior? It's in the Bible. Listen to what the Bible said. When the master came, what did he say? They found him so doing. So doing what? His destiny. So doing what? His purpose. So doing what? What God had asked him to do. So doing what? Being the ruler of the household and doing the job. So doing what? When you are trusting God for a manifestation of something, stay busy and take charge of your destiny. Stay busy. Busy doing what he's asked you to do. The master found him so doing. It's not your Bible. They found him so doing. Your behavior will not change if you are in the Kairos time zone. If you are in the Kronos time zone, your behavior will begin to change. Everything about God will irritate you. Your ministry will irritate you. The brethren will irritate you. Your relationship will turn to religion when you are operating in the concept of delay. That guy, what did he do? Ah, he's not here now. Ah, he's not here now. Ah, he's not here now. His behavior changed. He began to beat the servants. He began to drink. He began to do strange things. He lost his expectation. It degraded to anxiety. Have you seen believers act like that? Why did you just go off and marry this allergy? I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And my period is now getting delayed. I must have a child. I'm done with waiting for God. It has changed. Or you get yourself, you graduate to becoming a sugar mommy. You get yourself a young boy that will be sleeping with you. And you pay him money. Because you are in the Kronos time zone. Your behavior has changed. 
You begin to do funny things with your business. Begin to cheat brethren. Do strange things. Why? Your behavior has changed. Your focus is no longer on the master. Be the one who will be found so doing. Be the one who will be found so doing. Many examples I can give. My son Domene is an example. I've used Domene many times. Got out of school, didn't have a job. Found himself doing something. What was he doing? Driving me as a driver. I didn't have a driver then. That's why he's literally part of, he's part of my family. My kids know him. Why? He was our school runner. The man will come pick me up. We'll go for a school run. Play with the girls. who go back, take me back to work. He didn't have a job. He needed a job. But he was found so doing. And when the job came, when the Kairos moment arrived, the job came in style. And it has been moving him in style since then. And anytime he has free time, he comes and helps. Can I drive you? Can I do this for you? Why? He's taking charge of his destiny. Church, take charge of your destiny while you wait. Take charge of your destiny. Take charge of your life. Don't be that sister whose whole life is dependent on waiting for a husband. Come on, there's more to life than that. Or that person whose whole life is waiting on, oh, the day I will enter ministry. There's calling and there's separation. If you're in that time, get busy in a department. Get busy doing things that God has found you worthy of doing. Comparing their behavior, we can see the one who was in the Cairo zone and the one who had the concept of delay registered. Your business, you don't take risks anymore with your business because you don't believe anything can come out of it. You've settled. You've had so many failures. So just play it safe. The one that is coming in, let's just come in. And God is saying to you, this is a Kairos season. This is a season of open heavens. Things are going to change in your business. It's not business as usual. There's something about to happen in your business. And you say, no, let me just stay where I am. At least the Torah that is coming in, let it come in, that's been paying school fees. I can't take that risk. Ah, you miss it. You're looking back. You said, how long this has been? And God is saying, step forward and launch into the deep. Do something you've never done before. Because this is a season. It's my season. And I have spoken it. If I've spoken it, it shall come to pass. Don't let your behavior change. Don't be that angry person who is drinking with the drunkards. Because of how much time has passed. So we've compared the expectations. We've compared their behavior. Saying more about their behavior. When you are in that chronos time zone, all restraint is taken away from you. All restraint is taken away from you. You have no restraint anymore. Why? You have no expectations. No restraint. You do anything you want to do. You don't do what God expects you to do. The Kronos time zone removes restraint from you. Let us compare their rewards. Let us compare their rewards. Both of them were made ruler of the household to feed the slaves. That's what household means. The slaves of the house. Be paying them, be feeding them. I'm not around. And the one who was found so doing, when he came, what did the Bible say? He was made what? Ruler of goods. Church, is there a difference between ruler of the household and being ruler of all my goods? Doesn't that remind you of Joseph? Potiphar's house and then becoming the prime minister of Egypt. The reward of the one who operates in the Kairos time zone is great. The reward of the one who is found so doing with character that is restrained by his expectation is awesome. But the one who is focusing on how long delay time has passed. That one is even the little he had. It was cut. And he apportioned him among the hypocrites. A hypocrite is someone who has two faces. When you're in church and God expects certain behavior of you, but you're so fixated on your delay, you become another person. 
And the master came back and said, who are you? You're not who I thought you were. What are you doing? Go to the hypocrites. No reward for you. Who wants a reward from the king? Yes, you want a reward from the master. You can't afford to have your expectations degraded by delay and anxiety. You can't afford to be that person whose behavior begins to change because you're angry at how much time has gone. What zone are you in? The supernatural occurs in the Kairos time zone. It respects the Kronos zone, but it operates in the Kairos time zone. God daily loads you with benefits, church. What are these benefits? Opportunities. There is always an opportunity coming your way. It may not come when you expect it to come. It may not come how you expect it to come. But if God says he's faithful to daily load you with benefits, then be constant. Keep your expectations high. Feed them by taking charge of your destiny. And your reward will be settled and sure. Somebody say hallelujah. That's where faith operates. It operates in that time zone, church. That is why when people come and some ministers who want to be mischievous come and ask me, uh-uh, when is this uh, building going to be finished now? I told you how I told one. When I see your offering, ask me that question again. If not, never ask me that question. But sometimes I tell them how the building started. If I is here somewhere in church, if I can testify to this, but the Mecca can as well. Pastor Charles said he wanted a building that did not have pillars in the middle. As far as we knew by that time, there was no such technology. Mecca, am I right? We didn't know. But the man of God, the prophet of God, saw a vision. And he kept saying, the building I see has no pillars. It has straight view to the back. No blocking up. In the first drawing and iteration, if I made, had pillars. Because if I couldn't even conceive it. So he thought he could just, okay, let's just show the man of God this. And the building had no pillars in the front. Okay, let's just manage this one. But the back, I believe the thing was even built. The model was built. At the back, there was a usual hanging gallery. And the hanging gallery will have pillars at the back. And Pastor Charles saw it and said, no, that's not what I saw. <laughs> it has no pillars from front to back. If I began to design by the one who knows all things. If I began to design out of his, beyond his head, beyond his knowledge. Began to design by faith. And that building, that building had so many iterations before we got to this point. In the process of that, we began to hear about space frame roofs. Heathrow Terminal 5 was built, and it was a state-of-the-art thing. And we saw how a big span of space can have no pillars. If God began a building like that, do you think he will not bring the Cairo season to finish it? When people ask me that question, they're asking in the Kronos time zone. They're asking, respecting the concept of delay. I have no respect for delay. I have respect for due season. I have respect for opportunities. I have respect for the voice of God. I have respect for a vision that was birthed from heaven. When there was no head knowledge about that, I have respect for the prophet of God. But you come, when is the roof coming up? It has been how many years? No, it hasn't been. It was finished before it started. Because he saw the building. And he saw the building with a roof. And he saw it finished. And knew what he saw. And if what he saw did not exist in the books, when he saw it, there is no delay. We are moving in the time of God. And when we cut that ribbon and dedicate that building... Nobody is going to ask you how long. Nobody is going to remember how long. Everybody's going to rush in and say, this is my seat. This is my seat. Where is my seat? I'll sit here. No, I like here. Can I try the lift? Let us see the toilet. <laughs> when you wait for God and your package shows up, you will remember that you are 42. From 42, you will have a baby 
nay two, maybe three. And that's it. By 44, you have finished having your children. With three wonderful children running around the place. Will you remember Chronizo at that time? Give no respect to delay. Give no respect to the Chronos time zone. When it has no space in the doings and the timings of God. Glory be to God. Let's show the last thing. Engaging the supernatural by every Kairos opportunity. Engaging, engaging the supernatural by every Kairos opportunity. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance <laughs> happened to them all. I said time and chance. In the Septuagint, what word do you think time is? Kairos or Kronos? Kairos. Kairos. Kairos happens to them all. Kairos happens to you. And what is chance in the Septuagint? It's another word that means to encounter, to meet. <laughs> to encounter, to meet. Opportunities for encounters happen to everyone. I prophesy to you that opportunities for encounters are happening to you right now. I prophesy to you that your due season is here. I prophesy to you that what looks like unusual meetings are going to be divine encounters. Divine encounters in the Kairos season that God has placed us in. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and into even the next year. Divine encounters are waiting for you. And your eyes will see because you look with supernatural eyes. You will know because you operate by faith. You will understand because you have no respect for chronizo. And you operate in the Kairos time zone. Divine encounters and divine opportunities colliding together will bring you the goodness and the favor of God. Lift your hands and give him praise. Glory be to God. Time and chance. Kairos and chance happen to everybody. Except you're not a child of God. You can't be excluded from that statement. Glory be to God. So it means that the race is won by the one who is slower. <laughs> the battle is won by the one who is weaker. <laughs> Bread is in abundance for the one who is not as wise. <laughs> Ooh, riches are found <laughs> with the one with simple faith and less understanding. That is God's Kairos moment. The race is not to the sweet. How fast are you? Who cares? It's your season. The battle is not to the strong. How strong are you? Who cares? It's your season. Riches and bread are for you. Who cares if you know everything? Who cares if you have the greatest knowledge? It is your season and it is your time. Oh, glory be to God. God has a calendar and he gets things done and he gets things done <laughs> by seasons. Oh, I love Jesus. He gets things done by seasons and by opportunities. That is how his calendar works, church. Take your eyes off the clock and put your eyes on the season. Speak open heavens. Don't speak years. Speak open heavens. Don't speak time past. And there are times when this is going on, listen, the supernatural will outrun the natural in Kronos time. Some other times, the natural will outrun the supernatural in Kronos time, but it will still be the manifestation of God. Write down these two scriptures as homework because I won't be able to read them. Three, two scriptures. First one, First Kings 18, 41 to 46. And we see there, just write it down there, write this statement. The supernatural, Elijah, outruns the natural, Ahab. That's why time is irrelevant. It's Kronos time. The supernatural outrun the natural. But who did the hand of the Lord come upon? It came upon Elijah. It didn't come upon Ahab. But then look at the second situation. 
2 Samuel 18, 19 to 33. Write that down. Please go back and read it. 2 Samuel 18, 19 to 33. <laughs> and we see there the supernatural. Cush was outrun by the natural Ahimeas. In our confession, we say speed that is faster than the legs of Ahimeas. Ahimeas got there first. The Bible says he ran over the plain. Plain is highway, expressway. Ahimeas used express and got there first. Cush used the mountains. He used bad road, bumpy road, village road. Cush was not used to running. What you are used to doesn't matter in the Cairo season. Ahimeas ran by routine. Cush ran because it was his time. He had an, an understanding of the season. Cush had a message because he had taken charge of his destiny. When you meet that husband, who will you be to him? When you get that job, what will you be to the company? Are you ready to be that person? Ahimeas ran by the plain, but Cush ran by the mountain. So it seemed like the guy who gets there first, no, the race is not to the swift. David said, set aside, you don't have a message. He insisted on running by strength. Joab told him, you will not run today. He said, no, I must run. It's time, I must run. Oh yeah, go. Shoo, 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 shoo. Expressway, highway, Ferrari, choo, choo, choo. He got there first. It is not everybody who gets there first that has the hand of the Lord upon them. <laughs> Guess what happened? They waited. They had to wait for the one that had the message. And Cush came. In all wisdom, he spoke. And the king blessed him. What time zone, church, were you operating this year? Kill delay. Kill the concept of delay. It means nothing. The more you focus on it, the more your expectations will be eroded. And you'll be playing a routine religious game of believing God without really doing that. Lift your hands and worship him. Worship him. Say, Lord, I'm delivered from delay. I'm delivered. Lord, I will operate in the Cairo zone. <laughs> it's never too late for another chance with God. <clears throat> Don't tell me I'm 50. Don't tell me I'm 58. My business is dead. It's never too late. He daily loads us with benefits. Daily. Daily. Lift your hands and worship him. Worship him. Worship him, please. And tell him I receive your word. Tell him I receive your word. I receive this season. I receive this season. Shout it, I receive this season. I receive my open heavens. I'll maintain my expectations. I'll be who you expect me to be. <clears throat> and my reward is here. And now, somebody give God a shout of praise.